Today, I'm going to share with you the best strategy I have used to manage pencils in my classroom. Hello, my name is Melody Munch and I'm a second grade teacher in Oklahoma. And today I'm going to share with you the best strategy I have used to manage pencils in my classroom. We call it the Great Pencil Challenge. Now, I do have to preface that I was not the one that created this idea. Around my third year of teaching, I heard about this idea on Instagram. I even went back because I shared about it as soon as I started using it because it was working so well and tried to find the original person that posted and their Instagram had been activated. So I don't know who to give credit to, but I just couldn't take that credit for myself. So to whoever originated this idea, thanks to them, but I love it so much that I just have to share it with you. It not only helps the students keep track of their pencils and be a little more responsible for that material, but it saves so much time and expense in the classroom, not having to constantly go through pencils. It keeps our classroom more organized and more clean. It keeps their desks less messy. So it's just been an all around huge win. And it's one of those things that used to be a bit of a hassle that is now never even a second thought. We just all use the pencil challenge and it's easy and it works great. So let's get into how it works. The premise of the great pencil challenge is quite simple. They all get one pencil with their classroom number or you could write their name taped on the end the student like folded theirs over but usually it looks like a little flag the goal for them is to keep track of their same pencil for the duration of the challenge they keep track of it for however many weeks you choose my class has now been adding on because if we have a success rate of around 85 percent or higher I take that as a clue that we can handle more. If it's less than 85%, then I like to just keep the number the same. So for example, this year, we did a three week challenge twice because the first time we did it, we had about 80% success rate and I just wanted a little bit higher volume of success. So we just did three weeks again. And then when we had around 90% that time, we did a four week challenge after that and now we're on five weeks. Then they get a certain reward if they are able to stay in the challenge. I do recommend that the reward not be too lavish because losing a pencil can happen, can happen to even the most responsible of students and it really is a challenge. So we want it to be challenging and engaging and exciting and doable. So pick a set amount of time that you think your students can handle, even if it's just couple days or even if it's one week I think anything is better than nothing if you are struggling with managing pencils this will help so much I did this for the first time during the third quarter of the year my third year of teaching we were like towards the end of the year I think it was around March we cleared out our desk of all of our old pencils I had one student who literally had eight pencils hiding in his desk so we got rid of all the old pencils and then each student got a new pencil with their taped flag around it. And the first challenge I did, I think we just went two weeks. I know some teachers who at the end of the time limit, they like might draw a number. And if that student still has their pencil, they get a prize or they get a Jolly Rancher or something small. In our class, we use classroom money and the students have rewards that they can purchase that are intangible items like lunch with me or switching jobs with a classmate or bringing in a show and tell or reading a book to the class or showing the class a talent of theirs things like that that are free to me but cost some time in the classroom i even put in the slide i know a group of second graders that kept it for five weeks in a row so it's possible because that's what my own class record was. But I also know other classes, like my teacher mate next door to me, she did this from the first day of school and her class went eight weeks <laughs> and only two pencils of like her 23 students were lost. So I was so impressed. So there's a lot possible here, but so you can start small and add on. The rules for my class are also something I go over in the slides. And if you're interested in purchasing these slides, they do come in a set with some other things. I'll link in the description. Our rules are that you can only sharpen it during the day if the tip actually breaks off. So 
If the tip actually breaks and the pencil is unusable, then myself or for us, we have a classroom job person who is our pencil sharpener. One of us can sharpen it, myself or the pencil sharpener person. So they just lift up their pencil with the tip broken and then either myself or the class person, the person with the class job will ask to go sharpen that pencil. Part of that is because it's a little tricky to use the sharpener correctly and because there's a lot of times it's just not appropriate to sharpen your pencil and so they have to check with one of us and then they have to kind of get permission to to have their pencil sharpened so that they're not just sharpening just because it's slightly dull they can in my class i allow them to use a personal desk sharpener if they would like but they have to be careful because if they go to town sharpening all the time their pencil will get very small very quick and it will be really hard for them to last the duration of the challenge if they're tip is just not as sharp as they'd like they'd have to use their own personal sharpener otherwise i'd say sorry it's like as long as it's still able to write with then we're not sharpening it during the day but we do sharpen it at the end of the day so they will it says they'll only be sharpened at the end of the day they can all turn them in whoever our pencil sharpener class job person is goes and takes all the pencils that are in the bin and sharpens them so they can have it fresh for the next day and that's how we handle sharpening in our room if they lose their pencil this is probably the thing that is trickiest to decide like you have to kind of make a case by case judgment i typically first have them take everything out of their desk on their own so they have to try to look for it first retrace their steps i would say 80 percent of the time that pencil is in the desk it's either in between some books or it's in their art box and it's just buried and they weren't able to see it or it's hiding at the back of the desk and they didn't realize it was in there. So we always start by having them to completely clear out their desk and that a lot of times helps them find it. But if that does not work, then depending on the time of the day, I will either ask some people in the class or the whole class to take a minute to look for the pencil and many a times we find it. Or if it's just not a good time, like people are working on things and I don't want to interrupt them, or it's like right before a test, I will sometimes just loan them a pencil and say, you can borrow this for the rest of the day or until lunch. And then if we still don't find your pencil after that, you'll be out. So that gives us a little bit of a window of time to look for the pencil so that one, it's not super stressful. Like we don't have to find it right this instant. It doesn't stop the flow of the class. They're just borrowing a pencil from me that does not have a number sticker on it. So like they couldn't turn it in at the end of the challenge and get any reward for it because it has to have their class number on it. So they would borrow a pencil and then we'd look for it at a better time. That is something I use to keep everything flowing and stress-free. Find it, you're in. If not, you're out. So that's just generally how we handle it. If the pencil is broken in half by the student, they're out. So if they break their own pencil, they're out. But we have had some accidental cases where another peer stepped on their pencil. In that case, I do replace the pencil for free because it was not their fault. If your pencil gets too small to write with, which this round being five weeks, we had some close calls, they are disqualified. So it says sharpen wisely. This is one of the smallest pencils we've had in a while. There are two, but this one's I think a tiny bit smaller. Two very, very small pencils this round. But I mean, you can see that one's definitely like easy to write with. I don't know what this kid was doing. I don't know how he could use that pencil. He definitely couldn't get it sharpened by our pencil sharpener anymore. They had to use their own personal sharpener because it wouldn't have even fit. Like we couldn't have even got it in a sharpener to sharpen. Okay, so now let's get into some tips I've learned along the way of using the Great Pencil Challenge. This is my sixth year using the challenge. So definitely learn some things that will help you have your students' pencils last even longer. If you are wanting to do a week or two, I really think most any kind of pencil should be fine. But if you're trying to extend the length of the challenge to three, four, five weeks, I have to recommend Ticonderoga pencils. I wish I could say this was sponsored, but it's not. I would love to be a sponsor for them. The Ticonderoga pencils are just amazing, especially the pre-sharpened ones, because then it's so easy. I don't have to sharpen any pencils to get started with the challenge. They're ready to go. They're sharpened at a nice length. 
so everybody's getting the same kind of pencil. The erasers are pretty good. If you're lasting that long, that's gonna be the thing that goes first. Like the student's eraser went pretty quickly. And so I buy pencil cap erasers. They come in like a set of 100 or two on Amazon and we just have a big jar of them. And they can go get a pencil cap eraser and put it on. But these last so much longer. I've tried with other brands of pencils and they just fade out. They just like keep breaking after a certain point. And so we are just sharpening and sharpening and sharpening. And it made them get really, really small within like the first two weeks. And so we ended up not being able to finish our challenge and it, it wasn't their fault. So we like restarted when that time. These just really last so much longer. I and mean, we have some pencils for five weeks that are still a pretty decent size. They don't have a ton of, of long ones, but they're still very usable. So I even like feel bad changing out these pencils because they're still usable, but it's nice to have a nice fresh pencil sometimes. So I save these sometimes for students who get out and then you reuse them so that they still have a pencil, but since they're not in the challenge anyways, it doesn't matter where their pencil starts. So I just like to start everybody with a brand new fresh pencil if we're starting a new round. I know Ticonderoga pencils can be expensive, so this is a great classroom wish list type of item, or if you send a supply items to families in your classroom, having a your supply of these is really helpful, especially if your pencil challenges are four weeks or so, then you're only replacing them about once a month. So like this pack of 30 is gonna last me the next five weeks. So even though they are more expensive, too expensive in my opinion to buy if you're going through them. Like I know teachers that go through a whole thing of 30 every single week. So in my opinion, that wouldn't be worth it. That would get really expensive. But if you're using them for a pencil challenge, totally, totally worth it. They will just hold up really, really well and be able to help your students last a really long time. I just use good old masking tape to tape on the numbers. I'm sure duct tape would be more durable, but this has worked fine for me, so that's what I continue to use. And just a Sharpie to write on the number. So, very simple supplies. So now it's time to tape up some new pencils for our new round. I'm gonna save all these erasers because I don't want any of those to go to waste. And then we'll be ready for next week. We need to give these a new chance and then I need to pay everybody who won for their pencils with our class dojo app. That's how I do that, that's on my phone. So I can't really show you because that's how I'm recording, but it's just a simple app where you can assign point values to things. I don't use it so much behaviorally, but we do use it for payment for classroom jobs, for turning in their homework and for their pencil challenge. I feel like there's one more thing. Oh, their desk check. We do a desk check every now and then, maybe every three weeks where if their desk is organized before like I give them a warning and I go look in their desk, if their desk is ready to go, then they also get plus money for that. Okay, so now we are ready for a new round of the Great Pencil Challenge. Pencils are long, sharp, because they're pretty sharpened, so we are ready to go. That is how our Great Pencil Challenge works. It's been a game changer for my classroom, so much less hassle. I literally used to just have a massive bucket of pencils, and every day, if you need another one, you just go grab one, and at the end of the day, you were supposed to put the pencils in the to be sharpened bin and a classroom helper would sharpen all the pencils and then they could go grab them for the next day. And it worked, but this is just so much more hassle-free. We 
never have pencils left on the ground because the pencils on the ground, they just pick it up and go, oh, number nine, so-and-so, this is your pencil. So easy. So we never have an issue of pencils on the ground everywhere or pencils that are like jamming in the desk. Like we just use so much less. They're so much more intentional and they're so much more capable than you might think. My students are in second grade, so they're typically around seven turning eight or some might be eight turning nine during the year. They are so capable of keeping track of their pencil. Even students who might struggle typically with organization or students who might struggle with the classroom environment in general, I just really believe this is a great fit for the majority of your students. Of course, you might have some students who you can just tell it's not a great fit for them. It's just not gonna be for them and that's okay. I really believe that the majority of students can totally handle this. Start small and I believe you'll see success. I believe students will be engaged in it. They're gonna to wanna to keep their pencil and they might do even better than you think. You might be able to have them go longer than you ever thought possible with the same pencil. I really hope you give it a try. If you have questions, please let me know. I'd love to answer them. Thanks for watching this video and I'll see you next time.